Go to 1 John, chapter 1 this morning. Not a lot of time, but uh, I want to walk you through just a, a text that um, has become an incredibly um, important part of my life, it has had a huge impact on my life. I've done quite a bit of a study in the book of First John. Um, last year when I was still in seminary, uh, I did an exegesis class where we went through the book of uh, First John through, through the original Greek and really just dug into it, tore it apart, and uh, tried to understand what was being communicated there. And so I'm going to begin reading in First in John, in uh, chapter 1, verse 1. And to follow along as I read, it says this, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Anyone know who this is talking about? This is the most basic Sunday school answer you can give. Jesus. All right. You guys are awesome. You're already unpacking the text. John is speaking of Christ. The one that he had seen he had heard with his own eyes. He, he's talking about the humanity of Christ. There was, there was this form of, a, of Gnosticism. It was, it was really a proto-Gnosticism that was starting to arise in the, in, in the region, in the area. And, and it was really tar- starting to downplay the humanity of Christ, saying, now God could not have become a man because man has flesh and bone. And, and that which is, is, is material and can be seen and can be heard and touched is ultimately evil. And so we have to transcend into a, a, a spiritual kind of existence. And, and that was a heresy that was kind of invading the church. And so John was attacking that, saying, no, 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 Christ was a man. We saw him. We, we, could, we could touch him. We heard him. And yet he was God come in the flesh. This life, verse 2, was manifest. And we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and then was manifest to us. Just amazing truths there, but let's keep reading. That which we have seen and heard, we declare unto you that you may have, what's the word? Fellowship. So so let's go back to verse 3, the beginning. What we have seen and heard, which is who? Jesus. We declare unto you. So we declare unto you Jesus. And look at the grammar. Why? So that you may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with who? The Father. And with His Son, Jesus Christ. Within the church, we have this concept called fellowship, don't we? I think growing up in the uh, small kind of country church that I grew up in, that my dad was a pastor of, I think, I mean, on a good Sunday, maybe we had 40 people. On a bad Sunday, you know, it was 20. That was, that was kind of the church that, that I pretty much grew up in for, the, um, for, for most of my, my childhood, really from junior high on through uh, until I left the home. And um, a fellowship for me, honestly, was the church potluck we would do a few times a year. It was, you know, cookies, you know, so we have, we have a fellowship hall where you do fellowship. And so fellowship, kind of in my mind, was I, 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 I get together with these people and we eat food and, and, and we talk and we, we have fellowship. That was fellowship. Okay? What John is talking about in this text is not necessarily, I mean, that's a form of fellowship. But this, what John is talking about is, is a type of fellowship that goes much deeper than that. The Greek word is the Greek word koinonia. And at its core, it has the idea of a commonness. So, so there's one thing that binds us together. There, there's kind of one banner that we all fall underneath. One banner that we wave. One thing that brings us together. And according to John, that one thing is what? The one we proclaim unto you, and that is who? Jesus Christ. So when, when you think about the life of a church, what you have in a church is you have this weird kind of mixture of all kinds of different people, don't you? You have people that come from simple, poor backgrounds. You've got people that come from maybe wealthier, more affluent backgrounds. You've got people from nationalities of, of one sort, and then people that come from another type of nationality. So, 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 you, so you have ethnic, you have socioeconomical, 
backgrounds. You've got old, you've got young, you've got those are old who are trying to be young, you've got some people, everyone else in between, you've got married, you've got single, you've got divorced, you've got those who are experiencing blessing, those who are experiencing great loss and suffering. So how in the world is it possible for us to be a family? Because we're certainly not going to see eye to eye on everything, are we? How, how in the world does, does, does a church come together and really be a church? What we have to understand is the one thing that binds us together. The one commonness that we all have. Because we've all got different backgrounds. And those backgrounds shape who we are. And, and, and as such, we'll have different preferences, different perspectives on things. We'll disagree with one another, and that's not wrong. But at the end of the day, if a church is going to move forward, if a church is going to be healthy, a church has to understand that which ultimately binds it together. You see, in every other aspect of society, you have different, um, different I guess, groups of people. And we're going to experience one of them today. So Pastor Paul talks about his, his Warrior Watch group. What brings them together? They're all very much in love with their motorcycles. I've ridden with them a couple of times. They are. Love their motorcycles. Pour money and time into their motorcycles. So motorcycles brings them together, and recognizing veterans brings them together. And they're about to roll in. Because I can hear them. But that only goes so deep, right? What brings the Church of Christ together? The fact that we all like each other? The fact that we all see eye to eye? No. The one thing that brings us together is what? Christ! He died for us. He's removed our sin. He's removed the wrath of God. And that brings us together. So if we can remember that we are coming together as one in Christ. We may not see eye to eye on everything. But we can have what? We can have fellowship with one another. We can have commonness with one another. Why? Because that which binds us together is the gospel. And that runs far deeper than any interest in motorcycles or veterans or anything like that, our commonness in Christ should bind us so tightly together that we cannot be divided.